Um, thanks very much, Graham. It's really nice to be here, wet as it is. Um, what I thought I would do is I wouldn't read on, I think, 40 minutes or 45 minutes to just read um, could really be tiring for you. Um, so what I thought I would do is I would read from three of my books and I would talk a little bit about what motivated me and what interests <coughs> me and why I write them. And I thought I would start with this, which is Every Secret Thing, that no longer looks like this because they reissued it. Um, and this is my family memoir. And um, it was written after I had... Um, written about seven novels and it felt to me like the time had come for me to think a bit about the impact of my family and the meaning of my family um, on me and on my life um, and I had written an earlier book which was called Ties of Blood which was a family saga of two fictional families set in the 20th century in um, South Africa and it was a story of two activists' family, one of whom which was not dissimilar from mine. And I think when I was writing it, I was trying to work out for myself why people choose to become activists, why people choose to change their lives and to affect their lives in the way that my parents did. You know, what is it about those people? What makes them do it? And for me, I did two families, a white family and a black family, um, partly because I didn't think you could tell the story of South Africa just through a white family's um, um, point of view. But the white family was probably not dissimilar from mine. It had the same trajectory as mine. The, the, some of the people came from the same place and they went... It was in a way sort of a family saga um, work through contemporary South African political developments and the anti-apartheid struggle. And, Looking back on it, I think in many ways it is a praise poem to heroism, you know, to those people who did choose to sacrifice their lives in some cases. As my mother, I mean, I don't think my mother set out to sacrifice her life, but she lost her life in the struggle for a free South Africa. But, but it was a look at, you know, the wonder of what these people did. And I think this is its companion piece. This is not so much a praise poem. This is a look at the real people. Um, and again, a wondering of their child, of why my parents um, did what they did, but also a look at the, the costs to us, their children, um, and, and as well the benefits. And in a way, it's, it's, a, it's a closer examination of heroism. Um, my conviction of having actually grown up with people that you know, Nelson Mandela being one of them, Walter Sisulu, Oliver Tambo, those were the, my parents' circles who are seen in the world as he heroes. And my conviction about heroes is they're actually human beings like us. Um, and that's what makes them heroic. Not that they're out of the ordinary people, but they, they make choices for all sorts of different reasons at different times in their life, which leads them on a trajectory. And I suppose the heroic part of it is, is whether they can stand the course and whether they can keep their own integrity and sense of humanity as they go on this journey. Um, and I think South Africa is very lucky that it's those people who made the South African change actually stood the course and did stand, um, um, keep their humanity. Um, it's, um, I think it's a moot question whether that's happening in South Africa now, but of that generation, they were extremely lucky. And when I set off to write this book, I was, for the first time, writing a piece of non-fiction. I had to do various things myself to myself in order to um, make um, it work for me, which is I had to um, counter a prohibition in myself about secrecy. Because all my life I had had parents who were involved not only in the anti-apartheid struggle, but also my father was involved in the military struggle. Um, he was the chief of staff of the ANC's military. And in South Africa, almost everything that my parents were interested in did was illegal, including having parties where blacks and whites mixed together. It was against the law for black people and white people to drink alcohol together. So that the person who, you know, the, the uninvited guests of that time 
um, who were always the um, police um, who jumped through windows trying to see catch people drinking together. So I grew up thinking that you know what adult, what I was going to do when I grew up was have these very drunken parties, and at one point in the evening there would be a knock on the door and everybody would throw their alcohol into vases that were dotted around in order that when the police walked in, everybody was standing there with an empty glass. But apart from that, most of what my parents did were illegal and later on my father's involvement was obviously a matter of life and death in the military. And therefore, the stuff of what their life was, was never spoken to us. And I realized when I started writing this book, which was in 1990, just after the first South Africa's first democratic election, that I had to address inside myself a prohibition, which is don't ask. That it wasn't okay to ask the questions and it wasn't okay to know. And added into this process of the, my own self-prohibition against asking, was my father's reaction. My father was um, by then very ill. He actually died in the beginning of 1995, and he really didn't want me to write this book. Um, it's never been clear to me why, because he, 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 he didn't, I, I mean, I discovered things about his life that probably he didn't want me to discover, but actually I discovered them not because I'm a brilliant researcher, but because people came and told me after he had died, was it anything to do with the book? But that he said, you know, um, it's not your life, it's mine. You don't have a right to write about it. And this was something I took very seriously because I had to think, whose life was it? Was it his life? Was it my life? In the end, I decided it was both of ours and I had a right to do this. But I was helped greatly by the theatre director and writer, Barney Simons. Um, he, Barney Simons was in the apartheid year, the driving force of the market theatre. Many of his plays came to England, Woza Albert, born in the RSA. And, you know, I was talking to him about my difficulty about going into areas where, which uh, were sensitive to people and were se either politically sensitive or personally sensitive. Um, how could I do that? And his advice to me was to write to go to ask any question I wanted, to go wherever I wanted to go, and then in the end to sit down with the information I have and to decide what I was going to include in the book. And I thought that was, you know, really sound advice in the sense that a book cannot be everything. It's not, if it was going to be my whole life and my parents' whole life, it would have to be as old as both of us had become, as all three of us had become. And obviously you can't do that. And there were choices to be made. And I guess the thing that I thought most about, and it's what I think about as well when I'm writing a novel, is to be able to be as truthful myself as possible. And that I discovered researching this book and writing this book is not quite the same as being as factual as possible and nor is it the same as being a truth that stands outside of a, of a subjective vision. Because one of the things that I discovered when I was writing this book is that I would go and talk to more than one person who had been in the same room at the same time, at the same meeting that had made a decision and I would ask them what happened and everybody would tell me something different and none of them would be lying. And that what I discovered was it wasn't just how they felt about the meeting or the fallibility of their memory which had changed things, but it was actually about the fact is that memory is very much dictated by what happened afterwards and by the unfolding of history that changes your idea of what happened. And interest, I mean, I had a very interesting experience with this book as well, because once you write about your life, it sort of graves it in stone, and it annihilates other things that you might have thought or written about at the time. It becomes the history. It's not an entire history of South Africa, but it is actually the history of my upbringing and my parents and a memoir of them as I remember them.